Thankfully, this region itself contains, honestly, most of the smithing-based materials and or workshops to be required. The difficult part is finding black powder. Um, it, it is not refined in this region. It's usually considered almost um, a byproduct of some of the, the mining and smelting in this, and it's very rare to find. Eventually, you find one smithy that gathers it you're not entirely certain why. And everyone seems to send you, like, after you give people a couple examples of kind of the smell of it and what to look for, people send you this one direction, and you send to this one kind of small hovel that is attached to the very base of the mountain that overlooks the entirety of the city on the far northwestern edge of the uh, Braving Grounds. You come to the door, and it's a very, very simple, kind of slovenly kept house. The wood itself is a little warped from the weather. It hasn't kept well, and there's kind of a musty smell of uh, mildew from the outside of the building, uh, but it, you see a slight glow f- between the cracks. Apparently, there's some sort of interior light. Hello? Yes? Oh. <laughs> Charming. Uh, my name is Percival Frederick Stein von Musikowski de Roller the Third. Huzzah! Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I was sent to you. Uh, I was sent here in terms to hopefully negotiate the purchase of some black powder. I was heard. I, I've heard that you. The door the- slams open at this point, mid ah! and you see from around the corner a very lithe, crooked-looking man, quite elderly but very spry for his size. You'd see his his arms and legs are very lanky and almost spider-like in the way they move and and shift as he peeks out, and you can see he has spectacles of two different sizes and thickness around each eye. His hair is kind of frazzled and gray and white. <laughs> Oh. You said you need black powder. <laughs> yes, yes, come in, come in. And he runs back into the hovel. Nice. I gingerly enter the. We're not with him. We're not. As you step inside, the scent hits you immediately, and you realize this place is probably filled with black powder. And the last thing anyone wants is to set off any sort of flame. This would be a very bad idea. And as you look around, your eyes adjust to the low lit interior. You realize it's 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 low lit because there are two very very faintly set magical torch sconces on each side that are very very low light. Um, very similar to the ones surrounding you. In kind of like these, but even smaller. Um, and you can see in the room there there is a small forge that's kind of in disuse to the far end. Um, I would hope so. There are a, a, a large 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 number of crates. And barrels that all seem to be uh, containing various parts of discarded gravel. Uh, basically, whatever is kind of shoved off of any mining expedition goes to him, and he just shuffles through it and kind of separates in different pieces. And there's uh, barrels full of sulfur. There's barrels full of uh, what looks like broken uh, kind of onyx or broken quartz, and they're all been separated. And you can see now this is kind of his OCD collection. And there is indeed in the far end what looks to be a, a barrel. Uh, that contains a large amount of black powder that it's, it's just everywhere. It's like this very fine coat of powder that is encompassing this entire room. And as he turns around, you can see now his hands himself are black and coated in. He goes, so you came looking for black powder, did you? <laughs> no one asked about the black powder, but I knew it had a purpose. Yes, you wish to buy it? How much do you want? <laughs> Speak up! Speak of a heaven all day! How much How much for a, for a, a barrel or a hogshead's worth? Ah, uh, for the barrel! The barrel! That'll run you a. Uh, <laughs> 4,623 gold pieces for the barrel. However, for a hogshead. Really you can see now there's spittle dribbling down his chin. I can! As it's as if I can see Jeez. the spittle myself. Yes, indeed. Now, I, but the hog's head, which, oh, oh, and he turns around and like shovels through a bunch of pieces of burlap and sack and pulls out what looks to be an actual dried and hollowed out hog's head to fill this, to fill this ah. hog's head with it. This will only cost you 426 gold pieces. Oh, 20. Oh, yes, yes, yes. How, how about 400 oh. even, and you can direct me to some ore as well. Oh, I do not work in ore. I thought you might have a friend. Take a persuasion roll. Oh, nice Percy. Oh, nice Percy. Look at that, he slipped right into Mercer there. No, that's, that's uh, the other yeah. thing. Yeah! Uh, I, love, I love Percy. Uh, 25. 25. Wow. I'm sure you have a friend. You must, you seem, you seem so amiable. 400! 400, I send you the <laughs> Yes, yes, you take! My good sir, you have a deal. Glorious! He turns Glorious. around and just jams the yeah. head into the barrel of black powder, picks it up. Yeah. 
this soot kind of settles against you and the rest of you guys as you now find yourself partially covered in this slowly dissipating cloud of black powder. You <coughs> cough instinctively and push it away. <laughs> 400 gold, you pay? I gingerly put the purse down in front of me. He takes it <laughs> with a whisk. It's already put away into a side pouch and you hear the clinging of kind of haphazard coins in his far pocket. Yeah, okay, take it. <gasps> To something this way, and he grabs your arm and drags you out, <laughs> out of his hovel. He points across the way with this kind of shaking, crooked finger. Something there oh, in the brick oh. building. I tell him, tell him, Vitan sends you. <laughs> He'll give you all. Thank you for all of your help. You've been so kind. Ah, oh, my pleasure. You want more powder? Come back. <laughs> I might do that. Good, good. Goodbye. And pushes you out takes both of you by the arms and pushes you out, slams the door behind, and you're left kind of standing there, half covered in blackened soot and black powder in the center of the thoroughfare, midday, kind of stunned by the whole encounter. I mean, come on. Amazing. Oh, no, Amazing. Far gone. Amazing. Come on. As you approach the same area, you can see that the building, uh, you know, same as it was before, other than it's missing half a roof. Um, where it, it appears a bit low on powder. <laughs> it appears to be haphazardly covered with a series of boards that were just kind of nailed to keep things closed, but there is definitely with the snow and the rain, this is probably not the best place to be staying or living. <laughs> I'm going to remove my coat. As I've learned. Yes. Do we have oh. a trinket with us? Yes, of course. I'm going to put my coat on trinket for a moment, just oh. to keep it clean. A walking coat rack. Oh. That's what a trinket is. Oh. Oh. See, that's so <laughs> They're trying to get the coat off. <laughs> Thank you, Trinket. Hello? I feed uh, Trinket a chop. You hear some rattling, some movement, and you hear the shattering of glass inside. You hear a. <laughs> Victor, are you in there? Just a moment! Suddenly the door whoosh slams oh. open, and there before you, you see Victor, uh, half covered in soot, has a big old thick pair of glasses on his face, one of which is cracked. Uh, you can see uh, his chin now has this kind of puffed out, partially burnt and curled <laughs> bit of a goatee at the very tip of his chin. Uh, and he kind of looks up at you with these giant uh, eyes that are you know, projected and, and uh, magnified by his eyewear. And goes, Can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Percival. Do you remember me? No! <laughs> Excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was helping to procure some black powder again. We had it. We made a deal last time. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Do I have to? Okay. Oh. I'm going to stand out here. With That's quite body. wise. Please keep my jacket clean. <laughs> As you enter, indeed, a good half of the roof is missing, and is and is you can see now a lot of the things have been moved away because currently there is a, just a pile of. Burnt and destroyed wood <laughs> splinters that are also soaked through, and there's a little bit of kind of uh, mold and rot and mildew that is kind of gathered in that far corner as well from the weather. Um, I'm going to stand over here and fail to stay in character. Okay. Should <laughs> <laughs> go for that. I, you're looking well. <laughs> Mostly. And he turns around and you can see now what you did. What you failed to notice when you first noticed is that uh, where once there was five. There is now three fingers. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, he has character progression. <laughs> what will he do? That's uh, that's impressive. Learn uh, from my mistakes. <laughs> can learn three more times easily. Uh, I can. Three more. <laughs> he runs off and starts rummaging through a bunch of stuff. He's kind of Victor, I was hoping you would have some black powder for sale. I'm on it. I'm on it. Hold on. <laughs> and he whips around with this uh, this kind of metallic cylinder that is like very well sealed. And he's like, I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> That's very impressive. Oh. And he walks very carefully, like very gingerly placing it on the table. Oh, okay. Carefully. And he pulls out <laughs> like a small door. <laughs> Have to unseal the metal. Let's not do that, and I make a Quick, and I'm just going to try and back the thing down as quickly as I can. Okay, you smack it out of his hand. That's, I it's trust you implicitly. He goes, <laughs> it's coffee. 
How are you? I think you've had enough. Uh, I, I, I'll have a. I'll, I'm going to smell the coffee and. It's really coffee? Yeah. It's, it's kind of coffee. That's uh Sorry, trying to host. It's been a while since I've had a guest. <laughs> what? Would you like some? <laughs> Just one spoonful will be quite, quite. And he goes over to a small kettle and begins straining it through, and he's kind of making his own <laughs> coffee for on the side. So, uh, real black powder. Wait! I do know you. Yes. You've purchased before. I have. Return customer. Not many of those. Not many. Have there been others? <laughs> he pours a couple of cups for you, pulls it over to you. Uh, uh, one. Uh, months ago. Really? Who Who would? Nice woman. Uh, long, uh, good outfit, well-dressed. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you, she didn't happen to say where she was going, did she, by any chance? No, no. Yeah. Weeks, not months. Time. Strange. Weeks. Very good to know. Thank you, that's so helpful. Did you, did, did you talk about anything else with, with this nice young woman at all? No, she paid well. I'm sure she did. Kept her distance. I'm sure she did as well. <laughs> that's, uh... <laughs> I'm curious, I'm curious, how, how have your own experiments been going? Going well? Been, uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You should get that looked at at some point. Um, three, three more. Three Possible. more. Three. Yes. Uh, so uh, any black powder that you have, I would, I would be happy to. to yes. To <laughs> help you pay for a new roof, maybe. Oh, I have to fix that. You do. Money can help. Uh, explains the cold. He just smears the black right across the front of his face. <laughs> Doesn't it, though? It's like gelled in with whatever, you know, mucus had been kind of captured in there as well. It's just a streak across. Oh, that's not a mustache. That's so... <laughs> oh, uh, Comes back and he has these, uh, these... He's now keeping... Previously, it was just kind of out in the open. He's learned his lesson. He has these uh, glass vials. Well, similar to what they put potions into brew potions, but now he's filling them with powder. And he brings out about four of them and he goes, This is as much as I... Would spare. I already sold a lot recently to the lady, uh, and I have my own uh, tinkering to do. Um, but if you wish to buy these, yes, I would be happy to sell. That would be lovely. Okay. Um, uh, process of distilling, uh, drying, preparing. Uh, Two hundred fifty gold. I think that's very fair. Wonders. Deal. Deal. <laughs> that's. Yes? Uh, 250 gold, if you'd be so kind. That much? I'm going to make you something lovely. I love you. You're well. <laughs> hi! Uh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> I, I give the money to Percy to give to him. And I hand it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> <he's alone>. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some coffee? Victor! <laughs> Thank you, you're so kind. And if you would be so lovely as to not mention us uh, to uh, my friend if she should happen back. 50 gold. Oh, shit. <laughs> tell you what, Victor. <laughs> oh. I don't oh. think you want to tell her anything. Make a persuasion roll. <laughs> All you need is a five, I guess. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Given the circumstances, it's a really low TC on this. <laughs> so I'm glad this is the one you rolled twelve on. Like, oh. For you? Uh, I saw nothing. I love you, <laughs> <laughs> I love you darling. Nah. Caps it and like quickly grabs like a glass vial and kind of like pretends to put it in and caps okay. it up. <laughs> Keep I'm, it safe, dear. Until we meet again, all of us. Oh. Until we all meet again. Always oh. a pleasure. Ah, uh, keep safe and uh, yes, yes. Say, sir. keep safe. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Waves with his three <laughs> fingers. Close the door when you're done. <laughs> but, uh, if I may. Yeah. 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 You come up to the outside of a familiar hovel. Um, Previously damaged, missing part of its roof, the roof is mostly repaired. You actually see two individuals are over the top of it, 
hammering pieces of wood into it. Uh, not a very fine job, but definitely enough patchwork to keep the rain and snow from pouring in. Um, the door is partially open as you approach. Oh. <laughs> you might be blown up if you go in there. I know. Should we wait outside? Uh, let's just all just be ginger. Hello? Victor, are you home? It's Percy. Silence. Want me to go in and investigate? Uh, uh, hold on. Hello, you up there? Hello? <laughs> what? Where is the owner of this uh, um, domicile? I don't know, I haven't seen him. How long has he been gone for? Was he, um, couple hours. Oh, oh he's not dead, though. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have any idea where he's been off to? I haven't seen him leave. Well, I'm going to pop in and check really quickly, just letting you know. Your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I gingerly open the door. Can I check for traps? Boy. <laughs> you may make an investigation <laughs> check. <laughs> We're standing right here. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's not that bad. Uh, investigation. Uh, I've never used that. 11. Oh, uh, 12, 12. 12, okay. <laughs> you put the door open and kind of search the ground and the area before it and the uh, the actual frame of the door itself. No traps. All right. Um, glancing inside, though, you can see a little bit of light. Looks like there's a hooded lantern across the way and just a little bit of light that's flickering and it's kind of going against the wall nearest to you, to your right, as you enter. The same familiar smell of uh, fresh earth, um, kind of really, really, really dry dust, and a very familiar smell of explosive black powder material. Oh dear. Um, Is Victor in there? No, I don't see anybody in here. Well, should we just purchase what you need via the honor system and leave some coin behind? Oh, he's not necessarily, necessarily always a uh, believer in coins. Sometimes he just wants some trade. Also, I need to talk to him about some personal issues. Poof! You see uh, off to the side, what you didn't initially notice as you entered, but appears to be a wooden kind of trap door in the far corner that <laughs> Oh, sweet gods of Pelor! <laughs> and you notice that uh, apparently something, uh, a large sack of some heavy material has rolled off a nearby table and is now currently holding the door down. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm here, my fault. I'm gonna go try and lift it. Okay. You lift it up, set it up, it's fine. My coming on? He, he tried to kill me? <laughs> no. No, hello, Vic. I was just trying to give you money. You, you were stuck. You had gotten stuck down. What is down there? This is my mine I'm building. Your, your mine? <laughs> it's Mayan building. Can you not, <laughs> I can't understand simple English. Don't put things on top of the door. It makes it hard to get out. <laughs> Something's happened to him. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Are you sure? No, I've been knocked down here for hours. <laughs> no. Um. Grog Scandalin, uh, um, come on in. He's, he's help me out. Oh, he raises his hands up. You can see now where once was two, now is none. Oh, oh no. No. Thank you. No. you have to build him a hand. I know. Help him out. Can we not get him? Can you lift can him you, up? Can you can lift, you lift him up? The, the pole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, all right, yeah. I'll grab, it, I'll grab the stump and I'll pick him straight up again. I'll shake him a little bit. <laughs> I need him mostly intact. <laughs> oh, so like on the ground? Uh, tr treat, treat him slightly better than you would treat a member of your own family. Don't shake me too hard. More than slightly better. Much better. Oh, no. oh don't shake him too hard. Oh. I'm not there. Gas. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. And he pats you on the head with his nub. Oh. Goes over, and so you can see it's kind of bandaged. He goes over and then pulls the ladder up that he didn't use. <laughs> Closes the, <laughs> the ladder. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So, what do you want? Well, I was I was hoping to buy a little bit more black powder from you, if possible, and uh, I was curious if you had anything else for sale, and I wanted to ask you a couple questions uh, just about other customers again, just to... Uh... a lot. I know. Yes, I can. I have powder. You do? I can sell you more powder. Question one. Yes, how much? One question? Uh, first question. First question? Has a one-armed lady, a one-handed lady, a, 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 a doctor come by to purchase? Not a lady. I am an honorable man. I, 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 insult I know. Him. I, and I would, I would never insult your honor or um, preferences of any kind. But are you saying I'm pretty, <laughs> Victor? I think you know how I feel about about that. But you're a very attractive man, and. I'm taking on me. I know it. I'm taking. He's taken. Are you are you dating right now? No, I'm just taking. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I'm good. <laughs> How much? Um. Well, I was going to offer. I was originally going to offer some gold if you like, but if you if you like, I could make you a tool that you could use with your current predicament uh, as some sort of. Simple clawing mechanism for grasping, lifting, not getting caught in maybe, your mind. Maybe, maybe trade, maybe claw. I love trade. Trade is brilliant. Build and bring, build and bring, and we trade. I would ask one other thing if I'm to do this for you. One oh, other so thing. many questions. Does he have questions too? Does he have questions too? I do have a question. Do you have a question? <laughs> yes, I do. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I like him. What's your question? I'm just looking for a hat shop. Is there a hat shop around here? Um, and he's just pulling around for a second. Bunch of pile of oiled rags and shit. He pulls up a, looks like a, a small burlap sack that's torn somewhere at the opening. Hat! <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I beg you. Happy to help. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was everything I could have hoped for. And don't get near the fire. <laughs> really don't. Here. Has Dr. Ripley, has a, has a woman come by to buy black powder? One hand, one mechanical hand, one normal hand, mechanical hand. The one you're saying you can make? I'm going to make you something, a nice, useful claw piece, yes. So you're saying that this woman made a better hand than you can make? No, I can make a better hand. Then make me a better hand! Why would you give me a lesser hand? I, you're going to need to give me quite a bit of black powder for that. And more questions. <laughs> I had a bad day. Is that recent? That doesn't today? look that recent. <laughs> oh, that's recent. So that's wet. That's wound. very it's wet. It's pretty oh. recent. Okay. Oh. I can work with that. I can work with that. I'm going to go construct you something that will be perfect for your needs. I have a great idea. I will need another hogshead and a half of black powder and a little information about another customer, and then I will leave you to your work. Is that fair? Fair! He turns around, rushes over, and grabs the same hog, <laughs> phantom hogshead that he has lying around his place. Eats a lot of pork. Before, before he fills it with powder, he goes over into Scanlan and he goes, <laughs> Too big. <laughs> fills it with black powder, carefully brings it over, Kind of like holding it under his arm. Thank you. Oh, I will put this in something reasonable. Um, I'll be back in just a little bit with. Uh... Actually, do you have a glove that you used to wear or anything like that? Do you have something? Yes! Okay. He pulls his back and pulls out the, the glove that was on the hand, and you can see it's blown apart <laughs> and burned to cinders. I can take measurements the from that. Fingers that gone. It's just more of like. More of a sleeve <laughs> with like a charcoal edge. I think it. he would prefer a real hand than a claw hand. Would you prefer a real hand or a claw hand? It depends. How cool is the claw hand? <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I would much rather you spend time on projects for us than projects for him. Oh, this is projects for us. It's pretty cool. 
And believe me, I mean, I would, I would like to, keeping him happy is pertinent because I'm. St we I can make this myself. This is very can difficult. Regrow his hand. Hey, Percy. He yes. wants the claw to be cooler than that lady's claw hair. That's very easy to do. She has no aesthetics whatsoever. All right, well, then. F the old original head. Let's give him a Don't racing. worry about it. I will be back. I will not leave town before I've delivered to you something. Uh, sure. He takes the hog's head. Oh, absolutely fair. Completely Plague, fair. when you bring hang. Yes, of course. Then I deliver with new hang. <laughs> then all is well. No. No more questions. No. Oh, uh, no. That's fine. We'll be back. It'll be good. No small. I need a big hat. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help you, sorry. All right. Are you going to go find a hat shop then? Uh, maybe. If we pass one. Uh, all right. Uh, we will be back. <laughs> Stay safe. Okay. Stay Don't touch the door, please. I, uh, yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Just. Uh, we'll be back. Bye. I'm going to go find a workshop and all right. work on oh, something. Thank you. We'll see you later. <laughs> He's <laughs> big. <laughs> and I'm just right. It's, uh, it's the thing. I'm undecided about you. It's, you're not alone. So you make your way to the hovel. The roof worker's no longer there, and the door is closed. Victor? I've got your hand. <laughs> I'm sleeping! Do you want your hand? You want me to sleep? I don't see why they're mutually exclusive. <laughs> you hear a bunch of different locks fiddling. The door opens and you see Victor, clean face for the first time you've really seen him before, and he has a nightcap that just kind of in front of his face with a little like puff ball at the end. He's like, <laughs> I told you, I was trying. Oh, hell. Percival? Yes, it's quite good. I love your hat. Thank you. It's comfy to keep in. It looks it. Did you bring my hand? I did. I did. I brought your hand, and I will show you. It is very special. Come in, come in. No. Opens the door. You see, he's wearing his long nightgown that is covered in patches and tears in it. Most of it's been just turned black through soot, but the cap is perfect. It's I, in perfect I, condition. I have a special set of pajamas myself, so I understand. They're comfortable. He walks in, yes. um, still bandaged on the arm. Uh, you can see there's like a small kettle of tea uh, set by the small fireplace right there. There's a tiny little table and a tiny little stool that he's just kind of sitting on right there. Then he goes and he reaches over for the kettle. <laughs> tries to pick up the cup and just pour it into just like, it. I'm, I'm going to stop and attach and begin strapping this. Let me show you how this, it just, it attaches like this. Here are the two switches. And? <laughs> For your mine, um, I grab, hit the button, twist, pull. <laughs> and I just got that. And I get the spike and attach it. <sighs> Remove it. Put the hand back on. T. T. <laughs> sure. Why not always say yes? Well, <laughs> uh, Another cup. <laughs> and stands up and goes over, still holding the kettle and splashing everywhere. And he's like putting in cabinets, like happen. knocking pieces of glass out. And he goes, ah, found it. Pulls out another little, little uh, kind of ceramic cup and pours the tea in, sets it down. <laughs> to new hands. To new hands. <laughs> It is pungent, it is bitter, it has been steeped way too long, but it definitely cleans out the sinuses. And there is a hint of gunpowder to the flavoring. You get the sense that pretty much everything in this room is marinated in the same way, shape, or form to be flammable. Victor! He <laughs> can put hair on your balls. Oh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Has a woman been by to buy black powder? <coughs> Has a woman been by? I don't know. Weeks, maybe. Weeks. Did you make her hang too? I did not. Do you know where she goes? No. 
She paid well, though. Did she? What did she pay? Are you guys in the club now? How many people want that powder? Tell me! Tell them! Bring them more! I could use money. <laughs> How much black powder did she buy, Victor? Uh, <laughs> only counts to two, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Maybe 12 hogsheads worth? Oh, oh shit. Really? And how often does she come by? She only come by once. Okay. Thank you. I'm. I'm so pleased. I may stop by one last time before I leave town just to say goodbye. Thank you. Please do. I have more tea. Many different flavors. This is I call dark rose. It <laughs> certainly scalded something. That's. Thank you. That was very lovely, and that was very charming. And I unfortunately I have wanna, business in this. Try the other one. One more, and then I must go. Thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> Stink. And like sticks it into the wooden stool on the table that the thing kind of like breaks the wood saps it. <laughs> Remember that it's attached to bone. It, you, you can still break your arm. Just be gentle. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a lovely evening. Good night. Good night. Ah. ah. Pleasure, as always. Thank you. I, I leave in a little bit of a panic. <laughs> you leave and you just sit there staring at this long, chiseled point going. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, a Halloween edition. <laughs> Where a bunch of us nerdy ice voice actors <laughs> sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Hi. Tonight, we will astound you with spooky tales. I don't know what's going to happen because we're just going to continue the game that we normally play. You're welcome. I'm Matthew Mercer, the Dungeon Master. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't recognize my costume, you're really confused. Especially if this is your first time tuning in. Sorry. <laughs> I am not done dramatizing like that for the rest of the evening because <laughs> I'll have to run into traffic after an hour. <laughs>